There is just something so satisfying about checking off something on the to-do list, especially when those to-dos have a positive effect on our health. We've been talking on the show this month about how important it is to keep those goals smart. Mary Michaels is a public health prevention coordinator, and she's here to share tips on how we can stick to and reach our health goals this year. Yeah. Welcome, Mary. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well. Now, we're going to get to what you mean as far as smart sure. goals go, but what would you say is the biggest mistake people make when it comes to setting those New Year's resolutions or any health goals? You know, sometimes just the word resolution itself, it's like, oh, I need to set a New Year's resolution. And it just seems so daunting and overwhelming. And then it's just, you know, it's hard to follow through. And, and it, there's actual research that shows, you know, the percentage of people that set resolutions don't follow through with them. So the, the bigger thing is kind of, instead of saying, Oh, I need to lose 30 pounds by, you know, two weeks from now. That's like, okay, what little choices can I make that are going to have that same result? And just finding ways to stick to it. You know, yeah. I think sometimes we just maybe overshoot a little bit with our goals. Yeah, go big or go home, yeah. right? Yeah, Tend then, to fail at it that. Sets <laughs> up, it sets us up for failure, and then you right. just feel worse. Right. So let's talk about tips for having a healthy 2020. Yeah. What tips do you have for us? Well, you know, the biggest thing in almost anything, whatever your goal is, whatever it is you want to achieve, if you can make a plan. That's going to help you whether it's weight, exercise, adding more water, um, being better at your time management at work. You know, just plan ahead. So if you know you're, you want to do better at getting more water, carry a water bottle with you. You know, if you're eating out too much, pack that lunch, pack your snacks. Um, you know, use calendars. There's so many you know, apps if you're somebody that relies on the phone. Keep lists and, and schedule things right into your calendar. And, the biggest thing is just to set little goals along the way because then you're more likely to achieve those little goals and that's going to get you to your big goals. That's going to give you a positive boost to your mental health, to your physical health, and, and really then keep you on that path to, to good health. Now, one of your tips was to have a journal. Yeah. So what are some things that you write down to help hold yourself accountable? You know, sometimes so it might be, and you can do it so many different ways. Again, if you're somebody that's got to have everything on your phone, there's apps and notes and things you can do. You know, old school notebook, even just paper lists of things that you want. But journaling can help because if you're in, you know, kind of help you identify certain times of day. Are there certain times of day where your energy is lower? You find you might be um, stress eating or boredom eating. And so you just kind of write down what's happening that day. But it's a great place to give yourself self affirmations. Today I added, you know, water, three extra glasses of water. Today I stopped and took a break and went for a walk. And just give yourself those positive affirmations. And tomorrow, my goal is, you know, but you just kind of write down what's what's going on. And then you can kind of go back and revisit and say, you know what? Tuesday was a really good day. I'm going to go back and see what it was that I did that day. Now I can get through the next day. I never thought of it that way. Because when you think of journaling or writing your health goals down, you think of, okay, I'm going to write down what I want to eat, the calories, how this will help me, you know, maybe lose weight if that's what I'm trying to do. But you don't think about writing... I had boredom at this time. Yeah. I feel like overeating or binging. Yeah. You don't see that to uh, realize those patterns. I ate in front of the TV and pretty soon the whole bag of chips was gone. Yeah. You know, it's just, or I was feeling really sad and now suddenly, you know, I went for the, uh, the ice cream. Gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Everything in the cupboard yeah. is gone. And, and you can, you know, you can write down what you eat too to keep that accountable, but something, right. but then just put the mood and the feeling and the time of day and some of that along with it. Right. Good tips. Let's talk about smart goals now. Yeah. So SMART goals you will see in just about any line of work, any industry, when you're making any kind of strategic plan, if you've ever been on a volunteer board or anything like that, you've set SMART goals. But they're really, really helpful because they are specific. So you say, this is what I want to do. They're measurable. How am I going to show my progress along the way? They're achievable. You know, so it's like if you're saying I'm going to lose 50 pounds by, you know, Valentine's Day, is that really achievable or is it I'm going to make some smarter choices along the way? You know, it's realistic. Is it relevant to your life? If you're not a marathon runner and you don't right. really enjoy running, don't set a goal to run a marathon. You know, find something else that's really relevant to your life. And then timely. Be realistic about your deadline, though, but hold yourself accountable. And, and that's what a SMART goal is. And so okay. you can apply that to, like, again, work life, home life, and your health as well. So the tip about be making it measurable, I think not only me but everyone watching probably went right to that weight yeah why is it good to focus on health overall and not just what that scale is saying yeah. and that's exactly why because if the scale's not moving 
you're like, well, what's the point? I'm just gonna, you know, go enjoy the burger and fries then. But if it's like, you know what, I'm gonna add an, a fruit or vegetable to every meal. I'm gonna get extra water in. Pretty soon you're gonna start seeing results and you can't always rely on the scale numbers. How are my clothes fitting? How am I feeling? Do I have more energy? Um, how's my cholesterol? I mean, it's, so it's all of that. You can't just put the number on the scale because if you make those little changes in your lifestyle, you're gonna see the results you want. And what advice do you have for people who um, have that mentality of when they fail, they just say, okay, I'll start tomorrow, so then they do whatever they want the rest of the day. How do you hold yourself accountable even if you are failing? You have to let yourself. You have to expect that you're going to have those slip ups. Don't beat yourself up. Don't go completely off track. But it is, you know, sometimes it might be, all right, I, I, I blew it. Sometimes it's just get back on track for the next meal. You know, sometimes there is, okay, tomorrow, again, fresh start. And that's okay. It'll cut yourself some slack. Uh, find out how can I do better tomorrow. Do I need to call a friend and say, hey, you know what, tomorrow you need to call me and we need to go for a walk break or call and check in on me and make sure that I pack my lunch or whatever it might be. Get that support system around you that will help. Yeah, that definitely holds yourself accountable. Yeah. So thank you so much, Mary, for coming in, for bringing these examples, helping us plan and able to stick to our 2020 health goals this yeah, year. Absolutely. Have a healthy one. Thank you.